Pinta County Cowboy Church Where people greet you with a smile and a shame Glory, hallelujah, oh what a place Hi, I'm Taylor and this is Mickey Thank you for participating with us online here today at Palapena County Cowboy Church. If you have received a blessing from the message today, please consider partnering in ministry with us in spreading God's word. You can do this by going to palopintocowboychurch.com and scrolling to the left side of the home page. Click on the link, click here to give. Thank you for partnering with us and enjoy today's message. See what everybody looks like like they either need another cup of coffee but nobody's smiling at us today all right i can see you this is clear but i can see you all right so i just want you to put your hand out down for a minute just put it down if you don't know the song just make up your own words okay can you do that but i want you to put your hands together there we go all right big old smile we're gonna do that chorus at least one more time and maybe twice if we can't get everybody to smile at us, all right? I tell you what, it is a joy to be in the house of the Lord today, amen? There you go, sing it with us. One, two, three.
If you would, please, let's Check, join uh, Michael Cody two, in singing a little bit of Amazing three, Grace. Four, one.
This morning we have Mr. Michael Poe doing a little bit of drinking from my saucer. Well, I never made my fortune. It's probably too late now. I don't worry about that much I'm happy anyhow As I go along Life's journey I'm reaping better than I sow I'm drinking from my saucer My cup has overflowed Haven't got a lot of riches And sometimes the going's rough I've got a friend in Jesus And that makes me rich enough I thank God for all his blessings on me and the mercies he's bestowed. I'm drinking from my saucer. My cup is over. There's been some hard times. And my faith gets worn really thin. But you know, all at once, them old dark clouds will roll away. And the sun starts shining again. But I thank God for all the blessings on me and the mercy. He's bestowed. I'll keep drinking from the saucer, Lord. Cause my cup has overflowed. And if I should go on living, I want the way it gets steep and rough. Cup is 
Amen. It's time to dismiss our kids for a little kids' corral. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They I tell you what, well, we finally woke you up, didn't we? You know, I heard something uh, this week that I thought was very appropriate, and I'll just say this based on what we uh, just heard a second ago. You know, um, there's a lot of prayer that goes on in people's lives that where they, they begin the prayer by saying, oh, God, be with me. You ever prayed that? Have you ever prayed that before? God, be with me. And the thing about it is, is why do we pray that prayer? Because I'm, I'm here to give you some news. God's already with you. He said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. He's already there. Now, what's the problem? We just don't tap into it, amen? Uh, so he's there, he's in the house. Now, whether we tap into it today or not would be our problem, not his, because he's here, amen? All right. You excited to be in the house of the Lord today? Yeah, good, me too. I tell you what, what an awesome day. We, we, uh, we keep getting people back. Uh, off of sickness, and then we lose more. Can you see that? Uh, it's pretty obvious. There's there's holes, and it's kind of like everybody's kind of going through this uh, sickness thing. And and I tell you what, just continue to be in prayer for. Well, I tell you what, be in prayer for everybody. Amen. Yeah, <coughs> as I cough. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, yeah, be in prayer for everybody because I tell you what, it's a uh, pretty nasty stuff, and it kind of seems to be going around. But I'm I'm thinking we're getting hopefully to the end of this stuff. Amen. Okay, 10 of us are hoping that. For those of you watching on the video, there's 10 of us praying for your recovery right now. Amen. All right, very good. I tell you what, I do want to recognize a group here real quick, and uh, I'll move on. There's a couple of things I want to do before we get started this morning. Uh, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but our youth group has been working in Kids Corral. They take a Sunday a month, and they go up there, and they work in Kids Corral and the, uh, uh, and the nursery area. And I think, I tell you what, I think that's awesome, guys. I appreciate you doing that, and we... Uh, just need to mention that because uh, I, I like seeing our youth get involved with things that are going on around here. You know, that's a good thing. Uh, it's good to see them being active. Second thing I want to mention is next month. Uh, next month, I hope you haven't got any plans to miss a Sunday next month because you're going to miss something that's just absolutely incredible. And how do I know it's incredible? Because God's in the house and it'll be through him. Amen. We're going to talk about couples, all right? We're going to talk about couples, what every happy couple knows. And some of you are sitting beside your significant other this morning, and you already don't look like you're very happy about it. <laughs> it would be a really good idea for you to make sure that you're here next month, because if you're sitting here with a frown on your face, you're going to need this information. Amen? Trust me, I see you. You need it, okay? I, I'm just telling you, you need it. On the 18th, how many of you are single? Amen. All right. How many of you are just really tired of Valentine's Day because they always placate to the couples? So, therefore, couple people get flowers, they get candy, uh, they get little stuffed bears that say, I heart you on them, and that kind of thing, you know? And I'm right, ain't I? You know, and single people just seem like, man, this is just not my holiday or my time of the year. I'm just going to skip it all together. Amen? Okay, my, I'm preaching now, right? Okay, good. Guess what? On the 18th of February, we are going to celebrate being single. Amen? 
So what I want you to do is I, you're going to be our special guest that week and uh, or that, yeah, that particular Sunday, uh, the 18th. And I want you to invite every single friend you've got because we're going to celebrate you being single. Because I'm telling you something, there is nothing biblically wrong with you remaining single if that's what God wants you to do. Amen? There's nothing wrong with it. So uh, we're going to talk about that and the plans that God may have for you being a single person. And so I hope that you'll join us. Uh, thirdly, I have got a hilarious video planned for this. I do. It's, the it's probably one of the best videos I've probably ever seen. I, I, I've, I watched it and have watched it every day this past week. And every time I watch it, I laugh. All right. Now, my wife, see, she's shaking her head. My wife will tell you I have a very warped sense of humor. <laughs> All right? So what I think is funny, you may not, but I'm telling you to me, this is hysterical. Okay? And so we're going to introduce our series by, by showing this video. It'll, we'll play it every week in case you miss one. I hope you don't. You're going to need to hear all four of these. Even if you are married, you need to hear about what single people uh, need to hear about a relationship with Jesus Christ. So I hope that you'll be here all four weeks. Okay? Commitment time, all right? Just just make a commitment to be here. Good. Amen. We're in a series, finishing up a series now on what's next. What's next? How many of you have been here? Uh, well, we had the, we stuck the state of the church in the middle of this, so there would be, this would be the fourth one. How many of you have been here for all four messages on what's next? Awesome. That means this is all brand new to most of you, right? I can preach what I preached last week, and, and uh, you won't know, right? Isn't that cool? Yeah, some of you will, but, uh, you know, that's all right. Yeah, what's next? You know, a lot of times we don't think enough about this, do we? What's next in our life? What's the next season that we're going to in our life? You know, some of you are, are beginning your next season. Maybe uh, some of you are retiring this year. So since I've gotten a very new crowd, it looks like, uh, how many of you are actually going to get to retire this next year? Look at here. Boy, those hands went up in a hurry, didn't they? Woo! Thank you, Jesus. No more having to get up. It's 5 o'clock in the morning and go to work. That's a new season in your life. Now, I tell you what, you may be excited about that, and your partner may be going, I don't know how we're going to live. We're, we're not going to make it through this. There's no way. I mean, you know, uh, we're doing good to make life work with, with, with them gone all day long and going home at night. How in the world are we going to stare at each other for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, we're, we're just in trouble. That's a new season, amen? Some of you know what I'm talking about. Charles, you feel my pain, don't you, brother? Yes, I know. Yeah, some of you are going to get married. Is there anybody in here that's getting married this year that you already know? Okay, is there anybody? Yeah, okay, good. All right, we got one. Anybody else? Yeah. All right, yes. Our worship leader is getting married this year. Go ahead, give him an applause. I think that's awesome. And even if you don't want to applaud for him, the fact that he found somebody that would put up with him is incredible. Applaud for her, you know. Amen. That's right. That's a new season, you know, and we know based on seasons, it takes a little while to get adjusted when you're married. You know, the Bible calls that cleaving together, doesn't it? You know, how can a short word in the Bible take so long to do? That's what I want to know. But the word cleave is a really short word. But I'm telling you what, it is something that requires a lot of practice. Amen? Amen. All right, we'll talk about that next month. Very good. All right, how many of you are expecting your first or second child? Where's my, where's my daughter? Is she in here? Anybody else? All right, yes, okay, good. All right, well, that is a new season in your life because trust me, once you've had one, <laughs> it gets more, a lot more fun with two, doesn't it? Amen? Or maybe this is your first. It's something new in your life. It's a new season in your life. Amen? Okay, how many of you are just not going through any seasons at all and you really just don't want to, you really don't care what we're talking about now? <laughs> Thank you, Kale. All right, at least he's honest. All right. I, I beg to differ because I, I guarantee you, the thing about it is every time you guys that raised your hand, God's going to send you through another season right now just to teach you, you know. 
Ooh-wee. I hope that you got your Bibles with me, uh, with you, with me, with you. I can't talk today. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 12 is where we're going to be here in just a few moments. Proverbs chapter what? 27. Thank you. All right. I'm, I need to turn over here. I didn't do that this morning. So I hope that you'll find your Bible, guys. I think y'all probably got it up here, don't you? Uh, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 12. I'll find it here in just a second. I, w- I want you to stand as we read this together this morning. This you're going to ask yourself the question, well, good night, preacher. You're going to make a whole sermon on one verse. Yes, I am. And while I'm saying yes, I am, there are some of you in here that are going, thank God this has got to be short. Amen? Whew, all right. No, all right. Let's, let's read together Proverbs chapter 27, verse 12. The prudent, the prudent. See danger and take refuge. But the simple, and I'll talk to you about that here in a minute, keep going and pay the what? Yes, they pay the penalty. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word this morning. Father, even though it's short, it is packed full of a lot of stuff. So, Father, I just pray that our hearts would be open, our ears would be open, our minds would be attentive. Father, that we would take heart your word this morning and apply it to our life. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we love you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. Do you know that there's absolutely no correlation between knowing what's next and being prepared for what's next? Amen? Now, some of you have heard that before because you've been here before, but for those of you who haven't been here, I want to tell you there's no correlation in being prepared for what's next. You may know that it's coming, but the preparation for that is extensive, and most of us don't prepare. Amen? That's right. We don't. We just simply don't. Now, I've also realized one other thing. I've come to realize that yours and my intelligence, now I'm not calling you stupid, all right? At least not yet. All right, I'll explain. I'll explain here in just a minute. But I have come to understand that yours and my intelligent level does not necessarily guarantee our ability or lack of ability to make a really stupid decision. You may be the most educated person in this congregation today, but you may have the biggest ability to make a stupid decision. Amen? Amen? You know, I, I tell you what, I've seen that. I, I, I've seen very, very intelligent people, at least on paper anyway, make some incredibly dumb decisions. And I'm going to, forgive me for those of you who are watching on, t- on the internet right now or will be, and you're an engineer. Okay, I've said this before. Maybe you missed it. I got to say it again. Some of the most incredibly smart people that I have ever met are engineers. Some of the people that I have met that lack the common sense the most are engineers. All right? I just have. That's just my personal, personal opinion because I tell you, sometimes we check common sense at the door when we pick up our nice little diploma, and when that happens, we still have the possibility of making some incredibly dumb decisions. Amen? No, I figured y'all would like that. You good? Okay. Now, let me give you another example of this. Um, when couples come in wanting to get married, oftentimes I suggest marriage counseling. Most of the time I do. Okay, the only reason why I wouldn't, if I know that you are already a church member, I've gotten to know you very well, I understand who your spouse is or future spouse, sometimes I won't do that. But most of the time I do, all right? There is a reason that I do this. So if you're planning on me marrying you at some point in time, understand that we're going to go through some counseling. Somebody got excited. That's good. That's that. I tell you what, I'm going to send you a Christmas card this year because you're the first person that has ever got excited about that. <laughs> wow. Now, here's the reason why. You and I have probably never, ever, ever, ever been to an ugly wedding. Amen? Every wedding you go to, whether it's, you know, really well done or not, it's just, oh, look at them that look so in love. Oh, they're so pretty. Oh, look at it. It's just awesome. You've never been to an ugly wedding, right? But some of us have sure been to an ugly marriage. 
You see, the wedding doesn't always correspond with what goes on afterwards, does it? Why is that? Why is that? It's because you and I did absolutely nothing to prepare for marriage. <coughs> now, we may have, i got to get some water, somebody, if you don't mind. We've done a lot to prepare for the wedding. This is yes, ladies, just go ahead and say it, because I, I, I've met some of you. I know how it is. We've done a lot to prepare for the wedding, but we've done zero to prepare for the marriage. Amen? All right, good, good. I got, yeah, I'll get that water here in a second. Y'all pardon me. Uh, there are unknown hide, uh, things hiding in the wings of our lives, okay? And what I'm saying is, is just because you have fallen in love with somebody doesn't necessarily mean that you know them up and down, backwards and forwards. Amen? Amen. And uh, I'm going to talk more about this next week. I'm just kind of giving you a little bit of an introduction to where we're headed uh, shortly. But just because that happens does not mean that you can see everything. Thank you very much, sir. There are blind spots. There are blind spots. And all of us have them. All of us have them. There are things we choose to see. There are things we choose not to see. There are things that we choose to hear. There are things that we choose not to hear. And we purposefully do it. Amen? Good. Now, I got a great illustration for this. Um, the blind spot. Uh, boy, here we should all have some of this. It's good. Mm. All right. We'll try there. Blind spots. How many of you have ridden with somebody? And after you got out of the car or the truck, you, you said, now you may not have said this to them, but you said this in your own mind, I will only ride with that person when hell freezes over. <laughs> they are terrible drivers, amen? Now, my dad's not here, so I can tell this story, right? <laughs> and if you tell him, I'll just call you a liar, okay? I'll just, what I'll do. Yeah, it's on tape. Hey, y'all stop the camera for just a no, minute. That's all right. We're good. My dad, bless his heart, as he got older, I just scares me to death to ride with that man. You know, and my wife, my daughter, will will second and third this. Uh, and I don't think it's that he's just a horrible driver. He just, he likes to talk. And when he talks and he drives, he has a tendency to do this number. <laughs> Which way does the car go when you turn your head this way? Amen? And if, he, if he's sightseeing, he does this. So which way does the car go then? Yes, it goes to the left. Scares me to death, all right? But, uh, you know, anyway, you, you guys have got somebody in your family or whatever that do the same thing. And, uh, and, and it's these drivers that don't understand or don't pay attention to what's in the blind spot. Amen? Yeah. So have you ever been with somebody, you're driving along, and you see out of, with peripheral vision, or maybe you've actually turned your head, and you see somebody flying up beside you, and you're thinking the whole time, this person that I'm with has no idea that this person's over there. Okay? Amen? So you're with me. You're in the car with me, right? And as they begin to drift over in that other lane, I'm going to ask you to think about what it is that goes through your mind. And by the way, don't say it because I don't need to hear all that stuff, okay? Please. This is church. We're going to keep it like that. But yeah, you and I begin to think, <laughs> they don't see this person. It's in their blind spot. And so what do we typically do? I'm just going to show you, because I, I, I really think this is what everybody riding with you, if you're that careless of a driver, I want you to see what the people beside you are doing, because you probably never paid any attention to it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen? They are slamming that emergency brake, thinking, man, that we're, we're about to die. We're about to die. They don't see that car in the peripheral side or, or in their blind spot. All right. 
I keep hoping Ford, Dodge, Chevrolet, all those guys will put at least a brake on the other side. You know, I think we all ought to, yeah. I think it just ought to be just, it ought to be done. So anyway, hopefully they're listening too. I hope that's right. Uh, some of us can be so incredibly smart in our business decisions and so incredibly stupid when it comes to relationships. Oh, man. You know, we, we just think, well, you know, what happened to me last time, there's no way that can happen again. Right? Yeah. I mean, you may be a financial genius. You may be able to manage every dime or every penny that you make, and you may be able to manage it just right down to where you're thinking, wow, we even got money left over. But you may be in the most horrible relationship that there is because you managed your finances, but you didn't manage your relationship. Ooh, all right, it's going to get tough now. Sorry. We had our fun, right? <clears throat> but you've got family and friends, and let's see if this is true with any of you. Did anybody ever warn you, or did anybody ever go into what I like to call an intervention? They sat you down, they got four or five family members around you, and said, look, we see things that you don't see. So we're asking you to very carefully consider about dating this person, guys, and we sure don't want you to marry this person. Amen? Amen? It's happened, and, and, and what do most of us do? Most of us go, oh, well, it'll work out. It'll work out. I love her. I love him. Everything will be fine. Just give it what? Time. Time is not your friend. Time does not work out bad things. Okay, and, and let me just, I know this is eye-opening to everybody because we like to use this. This is what we like to ho hold on to. Time is not our friend. When it comes to relationships, things need to be worked out before that. Because if you don't work it out before that, guess what happens? It follows you into the relationship. Amen? Amen. Good. Face it. You're sitting on the sidelines scratching your head going, if you're this person beside this other person going, wow, how did they not see that? I mean, how could they not see that? I see it. I've heard 15, 20 other people look at this relationship or this particular situation. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe it's uh, your marriage. Maybe it's a dating relationship. Maybe it could be anything. And you're, they're sitting on the sidelines and they're going, I see it. I don't understand how come they don't. Amen? Yeah. You're thinking, man, they're just stupid. Why would they do that? Why would they do that? Now, sometimes others might say, yeah, I saw it coming, but I just thought it would work out. And maybe you did see it. Maybe you did see this. Maybe you said, you know what, yeah, you know, he or she, they got some issues or whatever, but it'll work out. Or, yeah, maybe I've got some financial problems right now, but guess what? In the long run, it'll all work out. Amen? Yeah. I was working on this message this week, and thought, a thought came to my mind. And, uh, again, I'm going to go back to the driving the car thing, so go back there with me for just a minute. You're driving your vehicle down the road and coming up on a traffic jam, and you see all the cars in front of you are stopped. What's the first thing you ought to do? Exactly. Take action of some kind. Amen? You either press the brake or the person beside you will press the imaginary brake, right? Or take some kind of evasive action. But when you see something coming and you don't do anything about it, it's just like coming up on that stop car in front of you and saying, oh, well, I'm not going to let up on the gas or press the brake. It'll all work out. How smart is that, right? I mean, nobody in here would do that, I hope. I don't want to drive beside you if you would, but uh, am I right? Are you all with me? Okay, right. We all know when there's danger ahead of us that we need to do something or take some kind of evasive action to get away from it or apply the brakes and stop and at least analyze the situation. Wow, that's kind of scary because I only heard 20 people say amen. 
All right. Proverbs 27, 12. Let's go back to Scripture. Hope you still got your Bible open, by the way. Hey, guys, would you put that Scripture back up here? Go back to our Scripture here. The prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. The word prudent means wise. So you can put it in your Bible in the sideline, put the, beside the word prudent, put wise. We don't use the word prudent very much, do we? No. Gee, that was such a prudent person. You never hear anybody say that, but you do hear somebody say, hey, you know what? They're wise. They're wise beyond their years. Or they're, they're, their decisions are very wise. So prudent means wise. Wise people know that life's events are all connected. They're all connected, every single one of them. Who you date today could be who you marry tomorrow. Who could be who you have a issue with the day after that? Who could be who you're divorced to the next five years from now? I'm not saying everybody. I'm not applying this to everybody. So not, don't think I'm forecasting your, your marriage. I'm not. But I'm just saying hypothetically, and once you're divorced, then what happens? You're never separated from that person because you're always connected to them, usually by a child. Amen? So somehow your past shows up in your future. Every single time. Every single time. If you make a bad uh, decision financially, guess what? It's going to show up in your future. Amen? Amen. So the wise, the prudent, the pe those people know that all of this stuff is connected. They're, it's all together. There are no isolated events and there are no isolated relationships. That's what a wise person knows. They know that the present becomes the past and then shows up in the future. So what they do is they manage their present carefully so when it becomes their past and shows up in their future, it will not harm their future. Well, I hope you're listening to me. I'm telling you, I, we deal with this so much as pastors and lay pastors and elders and churches, and not just here, it's everywhere. This is kind of a universal problem. Because you see folks make the same stupid decision over and over and over and over, and I can just keep going. And it's because they never do anything today to prepare for what's going to be coming tomorrow, which will be in their past. They just don't. They keep saying, oh, it'll work out. Amen? All right. Tough message. Now, the wise people are these people who say, in light of where I want to see myself, in other words, in light of where I want to be 10, 20, 30 years from now, what is the wise thing to do right now for that to happen? Some of you in here have done a really good job of preparing for your retirement. And by the way, uh, guys, uh, kids, younger people, it's a good idea. If you're going to retire, start planning now. Start planning now. Because I'm going to uh, publicly, on film, make you probably the, the biggest guarantee I know how to make. Social Security probably won't be there when you and I get 65 years old. I mean, it's headed that way. Amen? And so if you're not ready for retirement and you don't plan now, chances are you're going to be working until you're in the box. Amen? All right, that's just good advice. All right, that goes for all of us. All right, good. But I know there's, there are some people here that have planned very well. They planned for years and years and years ago. And now they are able to enjoy their retirement, do some of the things that they want to do. However, if they had waited until they were 64 years old to plan for 65 years old, they wouldn't be doing those things. Amen? Now, this is just practical good old stuff, but do you know it's biblical? It's biblical. Because we just said that. The wise think ahead. They plan for where they want to be 10, 15, 20, 30 years down the road. Now, here, here's, my, here's my thing. You, you want to know why a lot of us wind up in situations that we do from a marital perspective, a financial perspective, a relationship perspective? It's because we never plan to be anywhere with that person or with that situation 10, 20, 30 years ahead of it. We didn't think about that. We're gratify, gratify, gratify ourselves today. What's in it for me today? What am I going to get out of it today? 
How can I benefit from this today? Amen? Yeah. The prudent see danger. I want you to underline the word danger. Danger. Some of you are not old enough to remember this, but there was a little robot you should say, danger, 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 Oil Robinson, danger. Remember that? Some of us who are more mature. The prudent see danger. There's one thing that is true of everybody sitting in this building right now. There's one thing that is absolutely true of every single one of you. You ready? We see what we are looking for, and we hear what we're listening for. This is true of all of us, right? Let me do that again, because I think some of you missed it, because I, I see this blank look on your face. One more time. We see what we are looking for, and we hear what we're listening for. All right, good. Now I think you're with me. This is called, this has a word to it. It's called confirmation bias, all right? Which means we all have a tendency to look for information that supports what we already believe to be true, all right? If I'm sitting over here in the corner talking about and by the way, we're not going to get into political discussion today. I'm just going to use that as an example, okay? But if I'm over here talking about something that I believe to be true politically, and you don't believe that, you're more apt to walk away from that conversation because it doesn't support what you already believe to be true. But if you're going over there going, yep, 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 that's exact, that is it right there. I, I totally, you're going to join that conversation because it supports what you already think is the truth about what's going on in this nation. Amen? That's why some of you get ticked off and leave the church when I get into politics because I have my own views. And this has happened. Okay? Now, I don't try to teach politics here. It's not my job to do that. But I am going to teach what the Bible supports about what's going on in our nation. And sometimes the Bible doesn't support what you believe to be true. <laughs> Tough. Tough, because we're going to preach the Bible here. If it offends you, guess what? Get over it and change. That's all I know to say. Amen? Yes, good. I used to be real sensitive about all that kind of stuff, and I used to be real sensitive about making sure everybody, you know, bought into what's going on here. But you know what? The thing about it is, if it's the Word of God that offends you, I can't do anything about that anyway. Good. Ha, ha, ha. Now, on the flip side of this, we filter out information that doesn't align with what we believe. And um, what does this mean? You and I will not notice or look. Listen to me carefully. We're not going to notice or look for the downside of somebody once we have bought into the good side of them. I hope the youth are listening up here. This is how we make mistakes. It's because we choose not to see something in someone. Amen? Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't love them. I'm not saying that we shouldn't forgive them. I'm not say that, saying that in certain times we shouldn't try to help somebody. But the thing about it is, if a person's got a major problem that needs to be corrected, you marrying them is not going to help it. Sorry, <laughs> but it's just not. Now, now what we have is we have a personal problem that became a marriage problem. Amen. That's good stuff. All right. What separates a prudent person from everybody else? A prudent person will acknowledge what they desperately don't want to see. A prudent person, a wise person, will acknowledge what they desperately do not want to see. In other words, you are so in love with that person, your guys are, you're up there dating going, oh, man, this relationship's just awesome. And, you know, you've, ever, you've heard the phrase, we can't see the forest for the trees. This is what we're talking about here, right? Because you think you're so dadgum in love, you can't see all the issues that are stacking up against this marriage because this other person just doesn't have any idea of what the future holds, and they can't see their blind spots. They don't know what they are good stuff. But there's another character in the text. 
but the simple. Now, remember a while ago when I was reading this, I went, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to call you stupid yet. Remember when I said that? The word stupid is so offensive, isn't it? In fact, some of you are already offended right now because I use that word. Some of you are going, you know, he really just shouldn't use that word. That's just, that's just offensive. Don't use it. Call it something else. I don't know. You know, but don't say stupid. But you know what? I don't know if you're around me long enough. If you're visiting with us today and you come back, you're going to understand that kind of here we call a cow a cow. All right? So we got to call it what it is. All right? But the simple, the naive, or in our case, the stupid. All right? Nobody wants to be called stupid. How come we keep acting like it? If we don't like the word, we don't want to be called that, then why do we continue to make decisions that classify us in the naive, stupid category? Nobody aspires to be stupid. They don't grow up and say, you know what, Dad? I want to be stupid when I grow up. I'm looking forward to making every bad decision I can possibly make. I aspire to that. Nobody does that, do they? No. They, they, they grow up thinking, I want to be smart. I want to know something. I want to make good decisions. But it just seems like our fallback is just uh, stupid. Let's just go back to stupid. It's just easier. It's just easier to make a bad decision. It's just easier to just not make a decision at all. Amen? Y'all still with me? Good. The simple see the danger as prudent. Okay, they see that as wise. In other words, they see what's coming. They see what's coming, however. But they say, oh, well, that won't happen to me. That won't happen to me. Oh, I'm way smarter than that. Amen? I was having fun with this message. I don't know if y'all are having much fun with it as I am or not. <clears throat> the simple, naive, or stupid people who live life as though none of it's connected. They don't believe that what I do today is going to go in my past, which will show up in my future. They believe that there's none of it connected. Oh, yeah, I can do something stupid today, but next tomorrow will be a different story. I won't do that same stupid thing twice. And yet, we do. Amen? How many of you, this is interesting, I don't know, hopefully God's putting this in my head, I think he is. How many of you have prayed for forgiveness for the same thing multiple days in a row? Okay, now, that's okay. Let me ask you another question. How many of you have prayed for forgiveness for that thing six months from then? Okay, now, I could get into this, I'm not going to, but I, the, the thing I want to ask you about is, is, if, is a repetitive sin, something that you know is wrong, something that's come at you and you know that's wrong, that you see coming, you recognize, and that you ask for forgiveness for, is that something that you're actually going to do something about to change that 10, 20, 30 years from now? Or are you repeating the same sin because you simply didn't do anything about it to start with? That's a question we got to ask ourselves, don't we? You know, it's okay to ask for forgiveness. It's okay to, to, to do that. But you, there's a thing called repentance that goes right along behind forgiveness. And that means I'm not going to do that same stupid thing over and over and over again just so I can go to God and ask for forgiveness for it. It means my life has changed. I've seen it coming. I'm going to do something about it. And I'm going to ask for God to forgive me. But I'm not going to do the same stupid thing again. That's repentance. Okay, that's a side note. Whew, good stuff. The simple see the cars in their blind spot, but they say, oh, well, they'll get out of the way. Right? I'm moving. I hope they know this. I'm fixing to pull over in their lane. I hope that they're smart enough to understand that I'm about to move over into this other lane, and they need to either slow down or get out of the way because I'm fixing to do it. They know it's there. You know it's there, right? But you just simply say, well, I don't care, or 
eh, whatever. It'll go away. Right? Yeah. <laughs> now, I do think a prudent person, car number two, it's over here that sees the simple person making this awfully, incredibly stupid decision to just to change lanes without telling anybody. A prudent person will see that car doing that and slow down. So now we have to ask ourselves the question, are we in car one and we're simple and we simply just don't care? Or are we in car two and we see the danger coming, slow down to avoid the crash? You have a choice. You do have a choice. I have a choice. Maybe the simple actually don't see it coming. Maybe they're not looking for what they simply don't want to see. Maybe accidents are caused by people who just don't want to see it. Hmm. Maybe the act of the maybe they didn't hear it. Maybe they didn't look for it. Maybe they're not listening. Maybe their eyes are not open. So what the Bible tells us is they keep going, and the simple see danger, but just keep going. They just keep going and going and going and going, regardless of the circumstances or what's coming next. Now, most of you don't get the opportunity to hear some of the things on a regular basis like I do. All right? And I get a, a, a huge opportunity. But many of you have been a part of intervention, again, of sorts. And I will tell you, you've been warned if it's not by me, you've been warned by somebody in your family, hey, just don't do that. It's just not a good idea. You know, and, and you think, well, gosh, these people are just butting into my business. But really what they're doing is they're wise people who either one of two things, either already been through that and learned from it and don't want you to go through it, or they're wise enough to not have gone through it before and they see the danger of what you're fixing to run into. Guys upstairs. This is for you. This is why your parents, this is why your parents bring you in and sit you down and tell you, don't do that. It's not because they're trying to take your joy and fun away from you. It's because they know they are the wiser of the group. And they're going to tell you, please do not do this because it has a bad result to it, i.e. because I've either already done it and don't want to see you do it, or I just see what you don't see in your blind spots. Thank a parent. Thank a parent. Yeah. Mm. Think about it. You're driving along the sign and says sharp curve. Sharp curve. Now, I want you to think about this for a minute. Where's that sign placed? When you see, when you're going around a big old mountain road and you're fixing to make a big old giant turn right here, where is the sign placed telling you that's coming? Before you ever get to the curve. Same thing with God. And I want you to listen to this very carefully. You and I have a really uh, propensity for blaming God for stuff. Don't we? And yet, God put the sign way, 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 way back in your travels in life saying, hey, you're coming up on something, a season of your life that you need to be careful about. And here, the road is fixing to curve. The season's fixing to change. I put the warning sign out. And we have basically two choices. We can either be a prudent or wise person, or we can be a naive and stupid person and ignore the sign and keep going, or pay attention to the sign right now and make a whole lot better choice later. Amen? Yeah. If the sign was in the middle of the curve, it would be too late. We're already toast. If that warning sign showed up in the middle of our curve in life, we would, it'd be too late. But God's real good about letting us know ahead of time. His Holy Spirit's really good about letting us know ahead of time, hey, you don't want to do this. But I'm going to suggest that most of us simply ignore the sign and go into the curve as fast as what we would always go into it. And therefore, this is the reason why we all crash and burn sometimes. Amen? 
last part of this says, and pay the penalty. They suffer a natural but avoidable consequence. Do you know that you and I can avoid this? Scripture tells us that we can avoid this. You don't have to crash and burn. I don't have to crash and burn. You don't have to make a bad choice. I don't have to make a bad choice because it is avoidable. It's avoidable. So let me tell you, four maxed out credit cards and two car payments is not a time to evaluate getting a budget. It's too late. Amen? Amen? Now, some of you are laughing because you get that, don't you? 65 to 70 years old is not the time to evaluate retirement. Where am I? In the middle of a pregnancy is not the time to evaluate a relationship. It's too late. Once you're knee-deep in an affair... It's not the time to start working on your marriage. It's too late. Once you're on your fourth or fifth DWI, it's not the time to evaluate your drinking problem. It's too late. It's too late. The warning signs have been there. You just chose to ignore them. And when you and I get in the curve and we start to crash and something like this happens, it's just too late to begin the evaluation process on that. But God has given us time and warning signs in our lives to say, look, slow down or stop or, you know, avoid this to keep that from happening to us. Amen? Why does he do that? Because he loves us. He does. He loves you. He doesn't want harm to come to you. He doesn't want you to make a bad choice. He doesn't want you to see 30 years down the road you paying for something stupid that you did today. He wants your life to be full. He wants it to be joyful. He wants you to get the most out of it. But in that process, you've got to pay attention to the warning signs. You just got to do it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, the present becomes the past. The past has a way of showing up in the future. And yes, we all have blind spots. But I'm going to ask you today, what are you going to do about the blind spots in your life? Are you going to heed the warnings or are you simply just going to go through the curve? Because you have a choice today. You have a choice today. Now, if you choose to be wise, and I'm going to finish up with this and we're going to be done. I'm going to give you three words. You ready? I want you to write them down. To be wise. Wise people have four words that will describe them, or three words. I'm going to do three. Well, actually, there are four. I'm going to go four. I started to leave one off, but I'm not going to. Action. Action is your first one. Somebody bump that heat down. I'm dying up here. You do that? One of you guys? Thanks. Action is the first one. You will do something and not hope something. All right? If you are wise, you will do something. You won't just hope something. Gosh, I hope this works out. Gosh, I hope they get better. Boy, gosh, I hope he's not this much of a butthead all the time when I marry him. Right? They will do something. They will make some decisions up front saying, you know what, there's a standard that I'm willing to live with and there's a standard I'm not willing to live with. And if this person doesn't measure up to that standard, given God's authority, guess what, I'm not going to marry them and I'm not going to date them. I'm just not going to do it. Or that standard of a man, I hope my finances, I hope I can pay my house payment next month. But I sure do. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and get that cell phone. But I'm just gonna hope that I can pay my house payment next month. You know what I'm talking about, right? Wise people don't do that. Wise people don't hope. Wise people take action now, so that what needs to be taken care of, ten days, two weeks, ten years, thirty years from now, will be ready to be taken care of. It'll be done. All right. Number two, sacrifice. Ooh, this is where everybody doesn't like it. 
Do you know that a wise person will sacrifice something today so that the longevity of his or her life will be good in the future? I might have to sacrifice that relationship and just not go out with that person. But I know that God has somebody for me, so I'm going to sacrifice this relationship or this dating relationship so that I could be in place to, ha- to see and hear who God has for me in the future, and I'll be with that right person, and I won't have to be stuck in the middle of this. It's a decision. I might have to sacrifice some of the things I want today for my financial to be, position to be what I want it to be 10 years from now. Sacrifice. All right, third, you're going to incur some embarrassment. You're going to incur incur some embarrassment. Why? Because everybody around you doesn't understand the principle of a wise person. There are more stupid people in this world than there are wise. I figured I'd get a good amen out of that. Now, CR has heard me say this. We've said this in the elder meeting, but you know something, by the way, and, and I, I hope that you'll let, allow me to say this because this is not in the Bible, but stupid can't be fixed sometimes. But you're going to suffer some embarrassment. This whole idea of living wisely is not a universal philosophy. It's not something that's universally understood. So as you begin to do this, you're going to take some criticism of, well, how come you can't go out tonight? How come we can't go eat steak tonight? This may be your wife or your husband. How come we can't buy that new car? How come you don't want me to date that person? It's not a universally accepted. So as you practice wisdom, you're going to get some feedback. Amen? You're going to get some feedback. Number four, relief. Relief. Nobody regrets taking refuge. Now, let me explain that. When you take evasive action to avoid something that could have been a bad choice, nobody ever gets on the other side of that decision and goes, gosh, I wish I hadn't done that. They always, always, always say, looking back on my life 10 years from a go in the past, boy, am I glad we did that. Because you see, if we hadn't done that, this right here wouldn't have even been possible. Amen? Yeah. Nobody regrets responding right now to what they see and what they hear in advance of what's to come. They just don't. When you see trouble coming, do something. Do something. Your life depends on it. Your life depends on it. Now, I'm going to close up by telling you this. My source of strength when trouble comes is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, I know that I make mistakes. We all going to. We're all human. We're going to make them. But we don't have to make the same one over and over and over again. We don't. Because when you accept Christ in your heart, there is the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. And I'm telling you, I know this to be true. It happens to me. When I come up on something that's trouble, there is a Holy Spirit in my heart that says, don't do that. Don't do that. This is not good for you. This is not where you want to be 10 years from now, so don't make this mistake now. That Holy Spirit guides my life. I hope today that you can say the Holy Spirit that lives inside of my heart guides me and because of that I make a whole lot more better decisions than I do bad decisions question today is is do you have that Holy Spirit living inside of you because it makes that choice a whole lot easier so I'm going to ask you if you'll bow your head this morning and I want you to search your own heart and your own life for just a moment and I'm going to be quiet and let you do that But as you do that, I want you to think about who am I being guided by? Who's guiding my life? Because if it's you, you're liable to make a whole lot more bad decisions than good decisions, which means you're going to have a whole lot more wrecks. 
your past will show up in your future and your future won't be good. But if it's Jesus Christ that lives in your heart and his Holy Spirit that's guiding your direction, you're going to make a lot better or more good decisions than bad. Because you have a guide. We're going to give you an opportunity today to accept Christ. And if this is your first time here, I'm not going to do anything silly. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to make you come down to the front. I'm not going to do anything because, you see, I believe that the Holy Spirit can work on you right where you're sitting. That you can make a decision to follow Jesus Christ right where you are. It's between you and him. We're just going to facilitate the opportunity for you to do that. Because we, we believe that following Christ is the best decision we ever made. And we want you to be in a place where you can make the best decision you've ever made. Father, we come to you today. Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity for us to be together. And Father, as we enter into this time of reflection in our own lives, Father, I pray that you would speak to our hearts. Father, that we would be about you and only you, that you would, would block out all those things, Father, that would be a distraction to us and simply concentrate on the one question, who's guiding our life? And Father, as we assess that, Father, I pray that you would speak to those who are struggling with that question this morning. Father, that their hearts would be open, their minds would be open to receiving you as a personal Lord and Savior, somebody that truly has an invested interest and to the choices that they make and the decisions they make. Father, we can submit our lives to you this morning by simply admitting that, we're a sa that we are a sinner, Father, that we have fallen so short that we made a lot of bad decisions in our life. We've avoided the warning signs, but today is the day that we want to submit to you Father, that you would be in charge of our life, that you would be our Savior, our God, that you would deposit your Holy Spirit inside of us, that from this day forward we'll listen to you for guidance in our life. The choices that we make will be based upon those principles in the Word, Father, that you have spoken to us, and we will understand, Father, that you have given us plenty of warning signs, and we're going to heed those warning signs from this day forward. Father, I just pray that person would pray, Father, I am a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin. I believe that you rose from the grave. Father, I believe that you are at the right hand of the Father, petitioning the Father for me right now. Father, I want to open up my heart. I want to receive you as my Lord and Savior today. I want to follow your guidelines and your ways. I want to be more like you every single day for the rest of my life. Father, I know that you won't lead me astray. Father, help me to make choices in my life that will please you and you only. I love you, and I praise you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Ike, you and the band, come on. Amen. So here's what I want to do today. I'm going to ask you that if you have prayed that prayer, if you'll find one of those green cards and, and fill it out, let me know. I'd like to talk to you about baptism. And we have a baptism today. Amen? Awesome. The best day in Cowboy Church is always the day where we get to rejoice with people who are choosing to follow Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And, and today we're going to do that. So I'm going to ask that if you are looking for a church home that believes biblical principles and stands on those principles, that you come be a part of our church. We'd like to have you. We are a little bit behind on, on catching people for membership. So if you're waiting to get a phone call from us, be patient. Uh, Natalie's kids have been out all week, both of them, with the flu. So uh, it's been a little crazy around here. So y'all just hang on. We're going to get to you. But if you'd like to join our church, we'd like for you to do that. Third thing is, is we do not uh, take up an offering here in the traditional sense. 
We don't come around here with a hat in our hand or a plate. You can do that on your way out the door in the green and white container. And I, for one, appreciate, and I know God appreciates your participation in worship through giving. Amen? All right. How many of you are going to make a plans to come back next month for our marriage couple series? Every hand. Every hand. Yeah, every hand. Good, 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 good. Invite somebody to come with you. Yeah. You know somebody who could use this, don't you? Amen? Yeah. Now, you may not, you may think, gosh, we're in the best place we've ever been. That's good. Bring somebody else that could hear, might need to hear this with you next week and next month, and let's talk about happy couples, all right? Amen. I'm going to ask you as you stand, we're going to do Amazing Grace a little bit differently this time, but I'm going to ask that you sing with us as we get ready for our baptism this morning. Amazing grace, Good, all right. how sweet the sound that came a wretch like me. Thank you. You may be seated. This morning we have Michael Ward that's come to show his awesome decision that he has made. Michael, this is a Bible that we want to give to you. It's your roadmap. It, it has all the answers that you need. Um, but other than that, I want to introduce you to your family that uh, we're all your family now. So if you need anything, you come find us. Amen. Come on, buddy. Oops. Careful. Boy, we don't need a wreck now, do we? Michael, is it your profession of faith, buddy, that you receive Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Amen. My brother in Christ, I baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with him in baptism, but then raised to walk in the newness of life. Cross your arms for me. Boy. Amen. Amen. God is good all the time. Stand, let's be dismissed. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the awesome blessing of this church service, Father. And we just pray over this congregation, Father, that they have a safe trip home today. And Father, just be with them through the week. In your name I pray. Amen. Thank you for watching this week's message, and we hope you'll come and give us a look this Sunday. Here you'll find some of the finest country gospel music in the state of Texas, along with good, sound, Bible-based preaching. And I promise, you'll always be greeted with a handshake and a smile. Won't you come join us this Sunday at 10.30 a.m., and we'll have the coffee ready.